Hey everybody, hello and good morning. Greetings from Joplin, Missouri. Alright, local time here is 8.43. Today is Sunday. Happy Sunday everyone. August 26, 2018. Temperature is at uh, 79 degrees. Baby Blue and I are on our way to Terrell, Texas, which is 370 miles, roughly 6 hours and 33 minutes. We are currently traveling on Interstate 44 uh, West. I sincere apology that I know, I know, I know I have been trying. I promised you guys that I would do the mail call, but last night when I when I pulled over, um, I wanted I was gonna do the mail call, but oh man, I was so tired. Um, so I just went to sleep. I slept. In fact, I uh, I only slept for eight hours, and uh, I'm just doing a eight hour break or eight hour sleeper berth today in order for me to reach my uh, delivery appointment, which is sometime this afternoon. I would have to. I could only do an eight hour sleeper berth. All right, once again, our cameras today are Sony HDR AS300 and the GPS here is a Rand McNally Overdrive 8 Pro. Also, I saw Jackie's uh, live show, I think it is, so I didn't see it while it was live, but I saw her uh, video about my yellow jacket. Um, I didn't even know I've got two of them. <laughs> I just don't know. I just can't seem to. I can't seem to get myself the courage to throw away my old one, even though it's all kind of torn and dirty. And, uh, I know it's an oxymoron to wear a yellow jacket uh, trucking. Hey, trucking involves a lot of. A lot of black grease, but I, I just just can't seem to get the courage to throw that away. Anybody want a an old JBG Travels jacket? I mean, it's only got about a hundred and fifty thousand miles on it. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Anyway. So what's going on today out there? Anybody out there got a bit of a uh, bit of good news? Good morning, greetings uh, to Alan, also to Falcono11, 
Erwin Dagan, Sebastião Marcelo Lima Lima, Paulo Zancorato, Isatsinom, Hector Garcia and David B. Central Wisconsin Sco Scopy. Also to Bill Kramer. Oh, come on, baby blue. Oh, by the way, I, I slept last night with the APU running. Oh, it was sweet, sweet, sweet. But I couldn't help to think that uh, there was a very expensive motel. I forgot to mention that the uh, repair bill for the APU came out to $588. I'm not exactly sure what they did to it, but one thing I know, they did change the, uh, the belt because the belt was about a half inch and, or an inch too long. I, uh, I actually crawled underneath there, took the covers, and tried to tighten the uh, belt tensioner, and it was to the end of its travel. That means I couldn't tighten it no more. And that belt is still, you know, that belt's got less than 100 hours on it. I mean, it's not brand new, but for a belt that's a hundred, you know, only a hundred hours running time, that's that's still pretty good. And it was too long, so I requested that they put in uh, a smaller belt, you know, the next size down. Well, so far it seemed to have worked, you know, it's working great. And there is the Petro. I don't know if you could hear that. But uh, we've got a pre-pass. That's also because this Missouri way station here is closed. But the uh, the east side is open. That is our route for today. I have no information as to our next pre-plan. But my boss wants me to do a complete 10 hour break once I arrive at Walmart in Terrell, Texas. We are at mile marker 1.6. 1.6. camera died that 
Jeez, I was hoping to capture uh, crossing into Oklahoma uh, state line, which I already did, and I didn't get the the camera didn't get it. So anyway, welcome to Oklahoma. And as far again, as far as uh, Larry's daughter's wedding is on Tuesday. Uh, I'm on my way to uh, Terrell, Texas. And no, I was not invited. <laughs> I don't think I would have gone. I don't think I could have gone. And besides, the wedding is in uh, the wedding is in Minneapolis, Minnesota, I think. Come on, baby blue, you can do it. Forty miles to Big Cabin, Oklahoma. All right, I was asked the other day, or I think it was yesterday. What kind of trucks did I own when I was an owner-operator? Uh, the very first truck that I owned was a mid-roof. Well, I didn't own it. I was giving payments to a friend of mine. I think I was paying him like $600 a week. Actually, I don't remember that anymore. But anyway, it was a uh, it was a dark blue uh, mid roof Columbia. I believe it had a Cummins engine at it. About a year later, I gave that truck back, and uh, I bought me an old FLD from a previous employer with Dan uh, Dan Wallace was then the owner of Nordic Express. I bought it for about 16000 I think it was. I paid it off in, in one year. And... I remember the week before... The week, the week before the truck blew up, I spent uh, new tires, new brakes, fix it all up. And uh, I was out there in Massachusetts one day, and the motor blew up. So I had it towed to a scrapyard, sold it for uh, 
$1,200, I think it was. Oh, it hurt. But by then, I already, I already completed the uh, the payment. I, I already paid it off. The third and final truck that I own was a full size double bunk. To your uh, Freightliner uh, Columbia, also, and I was, I was one month shy, one month short of uh, completing that payment. Man, I I was very very excited to see the prospect of me completing that, you know, the payment that be. Lean free. But it didn't happen. I bought the truck from a, a truck driver that I met in Massachusetts who lived in Pulaski, Tennessee. It's the same guy I've been talking about for years who was an owner-operator. Bob O'Connor. He's retired now for four years, I think. Time flies. of Pennsylvania Ed Wu Alex Campos Anthony Drummond Anthony Acuna Carolyn Jones boss reminded me kind of requested me that uh, he's buying a 860 VNL Volvo it's going to be white it's gonna be loaded uh, I think it will be available by November He is looking for one qualified truck driver. He's willing to. He's willing to let that uh, qualified driver to drive this brand spanking new white VNL 860 Volvo for a full minimum of three year. Uh, experience the driver has to be either currently employed or recently been employed 
and he's very particular about uh, driving records so no DUIs uh, not too much you know excessive over speeding or speeding tickets and all that stuff so if you guys know anyone that would love to drive a brand new Volvo have them call uh, ADL Transport I'm sure my boss would love to talk to you and I think there's a $10,000 sign out bonus right now I just can't get my head wrapped around the idea of a $10,000 sign out bonus that's crazy Well, for those of you who may think that that truck should be mine, nah. God give it, God take it away, right? It's it's up to him. I would gladly, I would gladly drive Baby Blue till the end of my driving career. As long as the big boss keeps, uh, fixing her up I'm fine I'm not I'm not one of those picky truck drivers that I have to drive the best certain type of uh, you know truck you know what uh, there seems to be a big difference between the truck that you want and the truck that you need. Oh, I want a KW, uh, a W900 or a Peterbilt. That's what I want. What I really need, I just need Baby Blue, a truck like Baby Blue. I can go down the road with the air conditioner on and not break down all the time. That's all I need. I don't think I, my boss has expressed his disappointment with Freightliners. He said he's totally done with it. So he's uh, he's never owned a Volvo before. Uh, so he's gonna try it. He's done all his uh, due diligence as far as research on you know Volvos that he's heard it from the left side of the aisle right side of the aisle and it seems like the score is the same from each side yeah they're bad and the other one says no they're good so I guess it's really up to him now to find out for himself whether Volvos are good or not you know I've I, I played that game before you asked especially when it comes to truck driving um, You want to become an owner operator, so that means, you know, you ask owner operators, is it worth it? Is it worth it? You ask 50 truck drivers, is it worth being an owner operator? The chances are you'll come up with exact same numbers, say exact same number of answers, and you're left. To yourself well you know now I just got to go find out for myself then because uh, the research that you've done 
didn't render the, the outcome that you wanted or needed. I asked a lot of questions. Is it worth being owner operator? And I don't know. It, it just seems to me that it really is all up to you. Because there's so many factors that involve in being an owner operator. I mean, it, it might be bad for someone, it might be good for somebody else. It really it all depends on your lifestyle, your character, your discipline, and your circumstances. If you're a if you're a new truck driver with a family to feed at home, mortgage, car payments. And your paycheck to paycheck. No, that's not the ideal thing that you want to happen. Is you don't want to be an owner operator because having an owner operator or being one that means your expenses to that truck comes first, then the expenses of your family comes second. Especially a lease purchase. Uh, oh, oh. The, uh, the company that will lease you that truck, they will take their money out of your paycheck first, leave you the rest. That's just the way it goes. But I think if you're single, you don't have a whole lot of bills and you can afford to live in that truck for the next four years I think so I think it's worth it I think it's doable you know, I, the boss man the other day or it was on Wednesday I think it was told me if you're an owner operator if you only have one truck you don't really make that much money he said he didn't make that much money when he had only you know one or five trucks but when he got up to about eight then he started making money there's this I guess there's a magic number when it comes to being an owner-operator or kind of a, a company. I, I think it, it also varies though when you're a small fleet. If you only had three trucks, now this is just my example. I think if you have only three trucks, it, it's not going to make you any more money than having one. But if you have like five or six, basically I think what it is is, let's just say you have four trucks, right? Those three will pay all the expenses and the one truck was, is the one to give you the money. I think there's a, a magic number of the number of trucks that you have kind of like a tax bracket you're the, the more you make the more a higher tax bracket you belong to
Larry had this crazy idea last week that uh, I should offer the boss this truck and be an owner operator. My boss man says, I don't think you want to do that. Being an owner-operator sounds sweet, but in reality, I don't think I'd like it. I am the more anxious I am to doing my what, what I want to do always seem to backfire but if I wait on the Lord's time there's nothing I can do to derail that so I'm just gonna wait you know if he wants me to be an owner operator I'm sure he'll make it happen 